Today, we're going to use a smartphone and two microcontrollers soldered together to inject keystrokes into a computer on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Today, we're going to create a device that you can plug into a computer, access over a smartphone, and inject keystrokes the same way you would with a USB rubber ducky. Only instead of a rubber ducky where you need to know the type of computer and the type of payload first, in this scenario, we'll be able to select from a list of saved payloads so we can have the perfect one already created before we even know what kind of computer we're trying to hack. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be combining two different microcontrollers, a Pro Micro and this D1 Mini, on a circuit board. So while this requires a little bit of soldering, it shouldn't require too much in materials in order to put together, because these are all very low cost. And if you want to pick one up, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description to find all the links there. Once you have a D1 Mini and a Pro Micro, you can also pick up one of these PCBs in order to solder them all together in the link in the description. When these are all together, then we can get started. Hey Bytes, in 2019, YouTube started enforcing a ban on instructional hacking. And as a result, we started getting warnings and even a strike on some of our content. Now, in order to make sure we didn't get taken off YouTube entirely, we had to move some of the more problematic videos over to the Nullbyte website. Now, I understand this is a little bit annoying, but you can still access the content by checking out the link below and in the description. Thanks for understanding. And there we go. We can see that we've managed to successfully track this computer from our Grabify tracking link using our Wi-Fi duck over a mobile device. While the Wi-Fi duck is easy to create and simple to use, it's important to note that it is not encrypted, and in addition to this, it does create a Wi-Fi hotspot that is definitely detectable. So it may not be the most subtle tool if you're operating in an environment that's heavily monitored. In addition to this, make sure you don't use it against any targets that you're not allowed to because that would be illegal in a variety of different jurisdictions. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and you can pick up all the parts you need for this project or do any troubleshooting you need in the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, and we'll see you next time.